Good morning, folks. We don't have a completely quiet star, but the eruptions are filamentary and generally not fired in Earth's direction. An SDO maneuver hid the northern filament snap, making this one here the most visibly impressive eruption of the day. Billions of tons of plasma in a Saturn-sized loop. Solar flaring still isn't doing much. The lone flare was during those filament snaps, and the sunspots appear unwilling to help change that. Just one new group of spots on the disk, on the north, and it is departing with magnetic separation as blue and red are split. So far, the Earth-facing filaments have remained firm. None have released or destabilized. They remain our top watch, however, without any sunspots on the disk. These thin ropes are capable of releasing with almost no warning whatsoever. Looking at the solar wind, the magnetic situation suggests we may have recently hit a sector boundary. IMF prediction appears to confirm the phi angle delta. We've got calmer streams in general. Earth's magnetic field doing very well this morning. We are still awaiting a speedier stream from the departing coronal holes you see here. Incoming on the left is a slightly darker area, and that's going to be our next coronal hole. It is a negative equatorial extension of the southern polar opening. It will face Earth in about three to five days and is currently carrying medium to high level power. Top quake of the last day was a 6.0 that struck Fiji. This earthquake ranged from magnitude 5 all the way up to 7.0 on an auto reader, so 6.0 is a fair judgment, I suppose. Also had some increased seismicity on the western side of South America and a four-pointer striking Missouri, way above average there. For those who use NOAA's space weather pages, we could have some data dropouts today. They promise only about 30 minutes of downtime at once. Got a great article here on how subversively intrusive GMOs have become at the grocery store and probably your home as well. Last night, we released the first quarter report for 2015. The State of the Observers was posted last night here on YouTube, and it is linked for you below. It's a relatively important update. We'll try to hit every quarter while we keep everyone caught up to date. The super typhoon in the West Pacific is set to whack the Philippines head on. The storm is probably going to cause major damage and death. We can only hope it will have weakened by the time it hits China a few days later. Then, we come to the United States. Northern low still drawing an amazing convergence down through the states and driving warm, moist air into cold, dry air, leaving us with the potential for major storm activity tonight. The cold alerts still exist north and west of the convergence, but the top watch is for the yellow and red areas. It'll be fascinating to see if the Missouri quake zone acts as an earth spot for tonight's tornadoes. Torcon from the Weather Channel has that zone in its crosshairs, and frankly the alerts tomorrow aren't going to be much lighter. In Europe, we see a large-scale vortex flow to the wind into and around the low in Eastern Europe. That large-scale flow dominates the area and dictates the movement of all the clouds in the region. Down under, it's a simple matter of following the convergence here up and across southern Australia. It's where a strong cloud line is shifting across the land. Weather shares are appreciated. You've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. 2015 first quarter report is linked for you below. Check it out. Eyes open. No fear. at 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.